This is John Black, Super Chemist. This is not an instructional video. It is just a vlog showing a video account of some chemistry experiments I have done or am learning about. I do not go over all safety concerns, so if you repeat anything in the video, you do it at your own risk. This is part two of sodium methyl sulfate synthesis. Now we want to reflux it at 120. I want you to look over here. Here's the boiling point of sulfuric acid, ethanol, and where we want to be. And I just get, I don't look these up, so they might not be perfect boiling points. But if you have a mixture in the pot of these two things, right? Like we said, 80 and 90 milliliters. That below is at 145, right? That would be up here. So if you want to lower the boiling point of the pot, you add in the lower boiling point thing, the ethanol. If you wanted to raise the boiling point of the pot, you'd add more sulfuric acid in it. So all you have to do, if you're here with 80 and 90, obviously you'd add more ethanol so it gets the boiling point down to 120. That's where you want to reflux it at. And what we're going to do to do the F, that was for diethyl ether, ethyl bisulfite, I mean bisulfate, that's wrong, that should be an A. Uh, bisulfate, we're going to do, we want to boil it at 120. And keep in mind, this would be if it was anhydrous. I didn't, mine isn't anhydrous. Uh, it would be 80 milliliters of sulfuric acid and 160 milliliters of ethanol. Now keep in mind, that's nice and easy to do. You just double it. 80 and 160, right? So if you have a milliliter of this, two of that. If you have 10 of this, then it's 20 of that. 100 of this, 200 of that, etc. You just double it. Now, since I'm not using totally anhydrous chemicals, you know, I'm going to have to guess. This is a starting point. If it's not, if I get it up to 125 Celsius and it's not boiling, that means I need to add some ethanol in so I can lower the boiling point. If it's boiling and it's not 100, even 120 C yet, that means I need to add just a little bit more sulfuric acid to get the get the boiling temperature up to 120, 125. Now before we get into how much I used, uh, let me go over a couple things. Here's the equation again. Keep in mind, this is an equilibrium equation. Okay, so you can only make so much of this product before the equilibrium will stop it. Okay, how do you push the equilibrium to the right over to here where you want it? One way is by having excess of one of these things over here. It doesn't have to be ethanol, it can be sulfuric acid, but we already have the ratio of sulfuric acid to ethanol as a one to two, you know, ratio in, in milliliters. <clears throat> so that's set. There's nothing we can do about it, but that does give you an excess of ethanol, a lot of excess, all right? So that will help push the equilibrium to the right. Another way to push it to the right, instead of removing, I mean, instead of adding an excess of one of these two things, we take out one of these two things that it's made. Okay, as soon as it's made, we've got to get it out of there. It doesn't have to be water. It can be this. But water would probably be, be easier. And the reason I'm not going to do it, but what you could do is put this in a Soxlet uh, apparatus and reflux it so that the pot is refluxed through magnesium sulfate that's anhydrous. Then when you're done refluxing, pour a little bit more ethanol through the uh, ma magnesium sulfate, you know what I mean, to wash out any product that's in there. All right, I'm sitting here editing this video that I'm making and I'm realizing a mistake about the magnesium sulfate. Um, because you're using water, I mean, because you're making water, uh, during this reaction, you'll have some water in the mix, and plus I didn't use totally anhydrous uh, ethanol, so there's already water in there. My whole point is, is if you use magnesium sulfate, it might dissolve inside uh, your your pot. You know what I mean? As you're putting the pot liquid through the magnesium sulfate to to uh, wash out the water, the water is going to dissolve some of the magnesium sulfate. So that what you need something in there like molecular sieves, although the acid might destroy the sieves. So you need something that's not going to react or dissolve in the pot. 
you know what I mean? And this would work. Uh, but magnesium sulfate is not a good idea. It's just going to dissolve inside the water. I want you to look. This is a regular reflexing. You know, you got your on-bottom flask and you have a water cool condenser. You boil your stuff and you can't escape because it's so cold up here. It condenses back down into the pot. This is basically the way a sock slit reflux apparatus um, is. Your pot boils. It goes up this little tube. And it, then it goes up into a condenser, all right? When it condenses down, it can't escape because it's too cold. So it condenses and it drips down into this little vat where I have these brown dots. Those brown dots would represent the magnesium sulfate. And then you have some cotton or whatever down here, or you have a, you know, filter there so that none of this drops down into your, into your pot. That way, the stuff refluxes off. I mean, with the water, right, the water condenses down. As it goes through the magnesium sulfate, the magnesium sulfate would soak it up, right? It would incorporate it into its crystalline lattice. But the rest of the product and the other solvent would drop back down into the uh, pot. Then when you got done, you know, you got some still some stuff in here that's product. You just get some ethanol and pour it in there so that it, you know, forced it down into the pot. That way you could have the equilibrium pushed very much over to the right. You'd have a very, very good yield. Okay. Now, remember, it was a two-to-one ratio. You wanted twice as much ethanol as you have sulfuric acid in volume. So what am I doing? I have sulfuric acid. I'm guessing because I'm not doing anything special to it. I'm just using it right out of the bottle. We're going to guess and say it's 95%. All right. So... I think it was uh, 54 milliliters was a mole or something like that. But if you divide it by 0.95 or whatever, you get 56 milliliters out of the bottle to get one mole of sulfuric acid. So I times that by two. So I want to put two moles in. That's 112 milliliters. Okay, so that's how I picked my sulfuric acid. Now the ethanol, and the reason why I did that is because I want it to be two moles. So it's easy to figure out my yield and stuff like that. Now I wanted to add two moles of sulfuric acid because that was the limiting reagent and it would be easy to figure out my yield. I forgot to, I added in some sulfuric acid so I can raise the boiling point of the reflux. And I didn't really measure how much. It's probably about a half a mole, maybe 28 milliliters. Um, but I didn't measure it. So there goes, you know, knowing an exact yield. Um, but still we're going to carry on and and go from here. Um, the ethanol is picked based on what this is. This is 112 milliliters. Remember, we wanted the ethanol to be twice as much volume. So that's 112 times 2 is 224 milliliters. Keep in mind, these are supposed to be anhydrous. You know, if you have water in the pot at the get-go, you've already pushed the equilibrium to the left. You know what I mean? Um, you don't want water. I'm putting water in these, all these ratios, everything is based on me not having water. And I'm not going to do that because, you know, I want to see what happens, how much of a loss I get just from doing it without doing anything to the sulfuric acid and only getting, uh, only distilling the ethanol. And that's it. Just distill it. Don't dry it up better than an easy trip. Let's see what happens. You know what I mean? So here's our ethyl bisulfate. And it during the refluxing, it turned from clear to a yellow, kind of like urine, uh, to this orange color, this orange-brown color. And now we need to make it into sodium ethyl sulfate. All right, so we took our sulfuric acid, we made it into ethyl sulfate, or ethyl bisulfate which is a ester on this side, but since it's diprotic, it's an acid on this side still. And what we need to do is make this side into a salt, so it's sodium ethyl sulfate. This side's a salt, this side's an ester. Now these are all acid-based reactions here. The easiest way to do it would be to use sodium hydroxide, or any sodium base, you know, sodium carbonate, sodium oxide. And, it, you, you know, if you take the ethyl part out, 
you know, sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid is going to make a sodium bisulfate. But the, instead of it being a bisulfate, there's an ethyl group there. See how it's the same? It's just, a, it's just an acid based reaction. You're going to make a salt water. Here's your salt, here's your water. Now, the only problem with that, okay, is you have sulfuric acid still in the mix, right? And if you do this with sodium hydroxide or carbonate or whatever, bicarbonate, sodium oxide, whatever it is, ever base, you're going to make some sodium, you know, bisulfate over here, okay? And, uh, Sodium bisulfate, sodium sulfate, you know, all that stuff is soluble along with your product. They're both soluble. That's not a good thing. So what you need to do is use a calcium uh, base. And it doesn't have to be hydroxide. Actually, mine is probably half hydroxide and half carbonate because it's been sitting there so long. Um, you can use any even calcium oxide just because so, it's just an acid base you need a bisulfate and hydroxide reaction <coughs> this is the equation for it this way you make calcium diethyl sulfate and two waters now the nice thing about it, you might say well, why do you do that because this is soluble also both of these are soluble but you're impurity, the sulfuric acid that you want to get rid of, whenever it acts with calcium hydroxide or calcium carbonate or oxide, it's going to make calcium sulfate, which is insoluble. So this will stay in solution, right, your product or what's going to become your product, and this will get rid of the sulfuric acid because this will precip out and you can filter it. You're just going to keep adding this calcium hydroxide or whatever base you choose until you have a pH of 7. You just want to neutralize the acid. Once this acid is neutralized, you know it's all of this. Then there's no more hydrogens. But every one of these reactions is just an acid-based reaction making salt water. You can see you make more, salt, make more water here using the calcium than you do make with the sodium. So anyways, once you do that, once we do that, we will have calcium. We don't want the calcium salt of methyl sulfate. We want the sodium one. But we got rid of all the impurities. The only impurity that should be in there now is ethanol. And that's a liquid, so it will evaporate in the end. So how much calcium hydroxide am I going to use? Well, if I have a 50% yield, that means I started out with two moles of sulfuric acid and one mole reacted with this to make one mole of this, and you have one mole left over because it didn't react, right? So you have a one mole of each. It takes one mole calcium hydroxide to one mole of that. It takes a half a mole for this. And then I added in about a half a mole of sulfuric acid. So there's another half a mole. So if I have a 50% yield, and this is just a get, you know, I'm just guessing, or what this isn't exact science here. That's one, two moles. I'd need two moles if I have a 50% yield, somewhere around there. If I have a 100% yield, that means I have no sulfuric acid left. I only have one mole of this that I made. Or no, I have two moles of this that I made, but you only need half of the, as much calcium hydroxide, so I need one mole. I put a half a mole of sulfuric acid in extra, so there's a half mole for that. So that's one and a half moles. So I'm guessing somewhere between one and a half to two moles. And this is just a starting. I want to put enough in that it's a pH of seven. Now keep in mind, I'm taking this to a pH of seven, and then when I change it into sodium ethyl bisul, I mean ethyl sulfate, I will use. Uh, I will take the pH up to a 14. Now, the way you're supposed to do it really is to probably take the pH up to 10 right now. Don't miss part three. You enjoy have a great day and always remember, science is great.